Yo best, yo best, yo best. That shit crazy. What's good, bros? What's good? What's good? You know we're gonna get into it today, man. It's a lot of we're gonna start off with that DAC stuff. You know that. What's up, Joe? Waiting for Mike Guido to get in here. You know he always likes to make a an entrance so lots to get into today Dak Prescott gonna get into some NFL free agency uh you know talk a little baseball as well talk about the NBA Miles Leonard situation a lot of stuff going on man Happening, handsome. Oh, you talking to me? I mean, I know I, I know I'm alright, but you know, it means a lot coming from you, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So, all even live, Mike Guido, Barry Grant Jr. on Wednesday. How you doing, my friend? About as good as I can, I suppose. <laughs> so, Joe. Joe Morley Sports has has just brought up a nice topic. I, we're not going to start with that, but um, some big names being cut. And it's, listen, it's, they said it was going to be that way. It's begun. A lot of big it's names. Begun. There was going to be an absolute massacre this offseason. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to start with that, or do you want to start with the news out of Dallas? What, what what's up with you? Let me know. Well, I I think that the topic that you know, it's a little bit closer to home in both of our hearts is what happened down in Dallas. So yes. if it were my show, which it clearly isn't, um, I would start with that. Okay. So. <laughs> so exactly how loud do you want me to yell? You can loud, you can yell as loud as you want to, because at the end of the day, you know, we've we've talked about this at nausea and we've been talking about this for a while now. And Dak Prescott set some records. Four years, one hundred and sixty million dollars. It can go up to one hundred and sixty four million dollars, seventy four million dollars at signing. He can end up making ninety five million dollars in year one. The only good thing I see about this deal in regards to Dallas is there's a $22 million cap hit for this year, so they're still going to be able to have some cap flexibility um, as it, you know, next year or, or the year after this year is going to be um, 33 and a half, and it goes up to 43 or 44 and then 47. So what are your thoughts about this deal, Mike? Because we're definitely going to get into it in extensive detail, so I'd like for you to have the first crack. <laughs> so – uh, just to add on to that, so the Cowboys today also um, restructured the contracts of Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, and Zach Martin. That creates another $17 million in cap space, where they entered into today with under a million dollars in cap space. They had, they had like $800,000 or something like that in cap space at the beginning of today. Uh, now they're going to be sitting at a little bit uh, prettier than that. So... Um, I think that's important to point out. Again, the Cowboys always do this. They always have, um, you know, these sort of restructuring deals. And, you know, that they, they really, you know, manipulate the cap. And Jerry Jones has always been really, really good at that. So um, I do want to point that out. But uh, so Dak Prescott, he got everything he wanted. Everything. Everything he wanted. So – he got the no trade. He got the no tag. He got forty million bucks a year AAV. He got 
seventy-five million dollars in the first year. He got ninety-five million due at signing. Right? He got a hundred and twenty-six of that hundred and sixty million fully guaranteed. And he got his four years. Did you mention a no trade close? Yeah. No trade, okay. no tag. He yeah. got everything. Yeah. Literally. Jerry Jones made a joke about it today at the press conference. Said, if I wanted one player to financially take advantage of me, I would want it to be Dak Prescott. He admitted that Dak Prescott financially took advantage of Jerry Jones. Okay. Here's the thing. And I know that there is a there are a, a good group of Cowboy fans today. A groundswell. That are yes. Jumping and you know, they're over the moon with uh, with joy, right? Because they, they – we got Dak Prescott. He's our guy. And they're all – they're jumping for joy. I mean what I say when I say this. In two years, we'll be looking at this contract, and every single person will be. Okay? You and I already know this. In two years, the rest of the world will catch up. This will be a terrible contract. Yeah. Okay. When that cap hit hits forty something million dollars, what do you do? We just saw the cap today. The cap this year is one hundred and eighty-two and a half million dollars. Down eight percent. Forty million bucks. Do the math. Do the math. That's between. I don't know the exact number, but that's between 20 and 25% of the cap. Right. On one player. You got 52 more guys to go. I, I just, I look, it, it is as simple as this to me. It really is. It is as simple as this. Is Dak Prescott the second best quarterback in the NFL? No. No. Should he get paid? like the second-best quarterback in the NFL? No. No. It's that simple. Okay? I'm not – It's this is the problem with, with the NFL, and not even just the NFL, but just sports in general now. Okay? If I say – if I say that I don't want the Cowboys to pay Dak Prescott $40 million, what that means is – is that I'm disrespecting him, and I don't want him to get paid, and I'm pro owner. Right. That's not right. what I mean. And what you, I mean and, is, and is and that also I too, don't... Oh, also too that we now are saying that he's a bad person as well. Like, go ahead. Yeah, no, he's a bad player, bad person, bad. Everything. I'm completely dissing him. No, no, I, I, I just don't want him to get paid forty million dollars. I'm not anti-player getting big money. I'm anti-player getting franchise crippling money. That's what I'm. That's what I'm for. Okay, I want the team to still be like. I would love it for the player to get paid, and for the team to still be able to succeed. All right. Do you honestly think that the Seahawks are jumping up and down with Russell Wilson's contract? Do you think they, that Houston is jumping up and down with Deshaun Watson's contract? Do you they, think that the Steelers today are jumping up and down with Big Ben's contract? No. Absolutely not. It's holding them back. Okay, I saw a meme yesterday that I thought was really funny, and it, 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 it takes care of this whole thing. Okay, Tom Brady, you know, given how great he is, and I understand all that, but Tom Brady – takes pay cut after pay cut after pay cut after pay cut. He makes 22, 23, 25 million dollars a year every single year in his contract. It's nothing crazy. I get it, he gets paid a very reasonable salary. He wins the Super Bowl every year and everybody's baffled like, "Oh god, how does he do it?" Th that's how he does it. <laughs> that's it. Right there. Okay? He he takes 10 million less dollars than what he's worth. Okay. No, I, I Listen, would even say I would even say twenty. I mean, look, Dak is. Is there a part of me that's happy that Dak is back in Dallas? Yes, I like Dak. I really do. Like, I, I'm not by any means 
telling you Dak's a bad person. I'm not telling you Dak's greedy. I'm not saying anything. Okay. If you're in Dak's position, you probably would do the same thing, right? You get 40 million bucks a year. Hell yeah, baby. Give me that. Right. No. Right. But at the same time, this is going to destroy the Cowboys. It will. It is going to destroy the Cowboys. It, $22 million cap hit in this year is a win for the Cowboys. But that's it. If they don't get it this year, it, Nope, it's not happening. It is not happening. This is a bad contract. And I told you exactly, listen, I've, I've been very clear on this. If Dak was going to get paid anything over 30 million bucks a year, I wasn't going to be happy with it. And here I am. Go off, Mr. Grant. Come on, tell me. Tell me how pissed you are. Tell me that you want to jump off a roof. Yell at me. I just, I, I don't have anything left. I don't because. <laughs> when the news, for the show? When the news broke, I, I was so livid that I, I couldn't even sit down. Because I, I, I didn't understand how one particular player can own a negotiation as bad as bad as this one was then and we thought this whole time okay and, and uh, i'm going to let you finish yeah we thought this whole time that jerry jones wasn't budging right we thought this whole time hey, listen we got to give credit to jerry because the, he's sticking his ground he's not giving dak everything he wants and here we are dak got literally everything he wanted Oh my God! It's I, unbelievable. I, I don't know. I really don't know what to say because, you know, all right. Let's talk about the the details of the deal. They have the two back end void years to stretch out the signing bonus over six. So it's not so. Cap, it's it's more cap friendly. This deal is – it's a cap-friendly deal. It is. However, it's still $40 million a year for a guy that's not a $40 million a year player. That's my problem. I never understood in the NFL where it's about, oh, it doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter where you fall in the rankings. It doesn't matter about – it's just because your contract is up. How does that, – that that doesn't even apply in real-world situations, Mike. Right. No, you, are, you, are, you are highly qualified, whatever you do. And my, you know, uh, my, my contract is up, your contract is up, or you're still on the contract, and you're making a certain amount of money. And I can be able to say, well, I want what Mike's getting. You don't have Mike's credentials. You're not in the same department as Mike. It, do, it doesn't matter. I want what Mike wants. What what what, what Mike got? And maybe I can get even more than what Mike got. Mm. So so the way it's going, if this is the scenario or if this is the formula that the NFL likes to put in, that means that Josh Allen is going to make fifty million dollars. That means that Lamar Jackson will make fifty five million dollars. That means that if if Sam Darnold, right if if Sam Donald ends up staying with the Jets and has two good years. He may end up making $60 million. It'll just keep – so it doesn't matter how good you are. It's just because your contract is up. That's dumb. That's dumb. Baseball doesn't do that. Basketball doesn't do that. But the only sport that does that is football. How does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So, so how is – so let's just you know throw this out there. Let's say – that when Josh Allen's contract is up, when Kyler Murray's contract is up, when Lamar Jackson's contract is up, and these guys are going to get paid, you know, Mahomes-ish money, $45-plus plus million a year, which they will, right? right. $45, 50000000 million a year. That's what's going to be the negotiation, right? So let's say that happens. Don't you think that Russell Wilson is going to feel screwed? Well, Russell Wilson is going to say, uh, well, I, I mean, I'm better than Josh Allen. I'm better than Lamar. Like, I'm better than Kyler Murray. Like, I've been better my whole career. 
But I, I, won a super, I won a Super Bowl in my first two. Like, at, at what gonna, point does the market crash? What what point does the quarterback market crash? Like, I don't. That's the thing is, I don't know. I don't know because I I, I would love to say. I would love to say sooner rather than later, but I can't. I can't because what quarterback now, and especially in in the day and age that we live in, with we live in a world with more entitled people than we know what to do with. Okay, what you think one of them is going to say? You know, I think that instead, you know, I. I guess I could get paid forty-two million dollars, but you know what? I'm not really worth that. I'm going to get paid twenty-seven. None. No, of course not. He's going to unless okay, unless you're whatever, Tom, unless you're yeah. Thomas Brady. If if listen, if that team offers you that, okay, you gonna they're going to say, "Screw you!" I'm mean, I'll, I'll hit the open market. Okay, but I will be perfectly clear when I say this. It is entirely up to the owners to reset the quarterback market. Yeah. Period. It yeah. is. Okay? If and and this I know players are going to say, "Well, oh, this is collusion and this is all of that stuff." Okay. It, tough, okay? Like if the owners can agree, and I'm not saying that they got to talk to each other, but if there's any sort of universal agreement, okay? That the owners can say, you know what? We're not going to do this. We're not going to ruin our franchises by paying these guys d double what they're worth. We're not going to pay Dak Prescott $40 million. We're not going to pay Patrick Mahomes $45 million. We're not going to pay Deshaun Watson $39 million. And it's not because they're not good. Okay? It's not because they don't deserve it. It's because if we do give it to them, it is absolutely – it's going to cripple us for the foreseeable future. And, and the thing the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, a lot of sports fans or the people that claim that they're sports fans, oh, you know, they, they, players got to get their money in. Okay, cool. But football was not designed this way. I keep saying that, and people don't understand what I mean. There's a reason why Good the – there's a reason why the Eagles are paying such a heavy cap hit for that trade. You're not supposed to trade guys like that. It wasn't designed that way. So that that's a perfect example. The Eagles is a per, they're a perfect example because look, Carson Wentz got paid thirty two million dollars a year. Now I love Carson Wentz. You know that, okay? I think Carson Wentz is a really good quarterback. I, I listen. If it weren't for this past year, he'd be a top 10 quarterback in my mind. Yeah. He would be. Okay. The Eagles, after one bad season, and I understand that the Eagles are, like, they look incompetent right now. So that's part of this also. The Eagles traded Carson Wentz, have $33 million worth of dead cap this year, paying Carson Wentz to not be their quarterback. Okay, that makes sense. They have all of that money. If you look back on that, is Carson Wentz worth thirty-two million bucks? No. Even I would say no. Okay, no. I've said it from the beginning. There isn't a single player in this league that's worth thirty-five million dollars. There, there isn't a single player. Patrick Mahomes is not worth his contract. Patrick Mahomes isn't worth ten million dollars below his contract. Because as soon as you pay that guy, it is over for you. It's over. Okay? The Cowboys did at least somewhat of a decent job to create cap space for one season with this contract. Right. But it is so incredibly backloaded that what what the hell are they going to do? When that cap, you and I had this conversation over the phone. Okay? Once that cap number hits $42 million bucks, okay, $42 million cap hit in 2023, 2024, it's $47. Okay, even if they restructure that contract, they put more into the signing bonus, more direct money out of, out of Jerry Jones's pocket, 
What the, you, you think they're going to bring that down to $25 million? Absolutely not. Probably, Jerry Jones is not going to pay Dak Prescott $30 million out of his pocket. Are you kidding me? Jerry Jones, got, uh, as rich as Jerry Jones is, that's a that's a steep hill for Jerry Jones because that's not coin. the only signing bonus he's got to pay. That's a lot of coin. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Like, I, I don't understand how some people think. I really don't because no matter how you look at this, this is a bad contract for the Dallas Cowboys. It just is. Forty million dollars for Dak Prescott, who again, despite the fact that he's he has a good career record. Despite the fact that he's got good career numbers, despite all of that, was a different player when Zeke wasn't on the field, was a different player when Amari Cooper wasn't on the field, and he's coming off an absolutely gruesome, terrifying in, uh, injury. And also was a different player when Tyron Smith wasn't on the field. The Cowboys were one and three when he got hurt. One and three. And if the Atlanta Falcons knew even remotely how to play football. 0-4. Oh, oh, but it's the defense's fault. It's both. Yeah. It's both. And that's and that's the thing, man. Like the people people will will give you the 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 stat line. Oh, you know, he's the, the second winningest or you know he's up there in like the top five winningest quarterbacks in the league since he's been in the league. But they never want to talk about the last 17 games. Six and, 11. six and eleven. That doesn't matter though. Doesn't, oh, it's the defense. Defense sucks. How about the team? Oh, how about the team starts slow every time he he steps on the field. Mm -hmm. Besides that one uh, scripted drive for the opening drive, the flat, flat. That's on the quarterback. Then when you put the ball on the on the turf, that's on the quarterback. Then when you throw the ball to the other team, that's on the quarterback most times. Not all the time, most times. Dak Prescott did all of those things in those first four games of the season. Yeah. Yes. All of those things. Him and Zeke had like seven turnovers within the first four games. How do you win that way? And that that's what you reward to give $40 million to? That's like yep. if the Giants go ahead and go give Daniel Jones $35 million a season. Everybody's going to be like, but he fumbles way too much. It doesn't matter. His contract's up. How does that make sense? It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, so, it really is. It really is I unbelievable. I don't know. Because, By the way, yeah. Dak Prescott's last 10 games against teams that have gone on to make the playoffs – he is one and nine <laughs> against teams that against playoff teams against teams that go on to make the playoffs. In Dak Prescott's last ten games against those teams, he is one and nine. Does everybody forget about the game against the Eagles where they had a chance to win the division and Dak Prescott came yeah. up short? Remember that. Like all of the, you know, you got you got a quarterback that likes to come up short. He's one and two in the playoffs, but hey, Zeke never to be found in clutch situations. So you got two of your highest paid players at their positions. Well, second highest, and now you know I think Zeke, Zeke is number one in regards to running backs. Or is it or is it Kamara now? I think it's McCaffrey. It's McCaffrey. Okay, so Zeke is top McCaffrey? three. Zeke is top three. Yeah. Both of those guys have underperformed on the field. Fan podcast said, are we just talking about the money here? What do you mean? His performance warrants $40 million? Is that what you're saying? I, you need to show me I that. I don't get how some people think, dude. I don't. How don't. does that make sense? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, and I don't know if that's what fan podcast means or not. But That's what, I need yeah, I the, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I just... I, I If you If you think that Dak Prescott is worth forty million dollars. Dak is a top ten quarterback. Maybe, maybe he is. Maybe Dak Prescott is a top ten quarterback. I'm not denying that fact. Okay, my point is is that that doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter if he's a top 10 quarterback. Paying your quarterback that much money is not responsible. Period. Period. And no, and before we move on, I have to debunk this. I have to just squash this entire argument. If they had just paid Dak Prescott earlier, we wouldn't be talking about this. Yeah, we would. Yeah, we would. We would be talking about it. You know why? Because if they didn't, if they did pay Dak Prescott before, first of all, you're paying him like this. Here's your money. <laughs> you're paying him like that. Okay. And the other part of it is, is that what would the number have been then? 35? 34, 35? Is that what it, it would have been? Like, look, the, the Cowboys tried to negotiate with him last year. And they couldn't get a contract. Uh, and they couldn't get a deal done. There you go. Thank you, A-Fresh. He's a top 10 quarterback, but not top five money worth that type of money. It's, it's exactly our point. It's exactly what we're trying to say. Is that as good as he is, as top 10, lower top 10, maybe 11, 12, what are you – He's not a top five money maker. He's not. He's not a guy that is going to give you wins when you have nothing. There's only a few guys that can do that. And I can't yeah. even say Mahomes because Mahomes has he's had everything. Russell? Yeah. Wilson, Rogers. Rogers? Deshaun Watson. Watson. Nah, not even. Not even really. Not even Deshaun Watson. This past year, with nothing really, didn't really win. When, at, when he yeah. had DeAndre Hopkins in a running game and an offensive line, yeah, they were a playoff team. So right, so, so now we're talking now about that he didn't really have much in Houston. Talking, he couldn't win games. We're talking about two quarterbacks in the league. If you're not counting Tom Brady because he has a he has a team, but two quarterbacks that can be able to give you at least at least with nothing three extra wins. Dak can't do that. We saw what Dak looked like before Amari Cooper was on the team. We saw it. Very recent history. So things have to be perfect. But moving on. Moving on. What is the biggest surprise that you've seen, Mike, in regards to these cuts? I, I think the biggest surprise to me is um is the is the is the guard from the Giants? I, I didn't I didn't think they wouldn't cut him. Kevin Zeitler. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm not really surprised that they cut him because I I kind of had a feeling they would. Um, you know, veteran player do a good amount of money. I think they're you know they were just saying you know what let's just not go. I I didn't really agree with it, but. Um, the Titans axed a bunch of money today. Malcolm Butler, Kenny Vaccaro, both gone. Yeah, right, right. Um, so uh, there there were a lot of players. The Saints cut Emmanuel Sanders today. Um, I know there were some more that, I, that I'm missing, but um, it's it's an absolute massacre today. The wide and, receiver market, Mike, is, is crazy. Do you think – do you see any wide receivers out there getting big, big money? In this offseason, do you think that guys are going to have to get like proven deals? I don't see, I don't see big markets for these guys out there, man. What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think, I mean, look, I, I, I it's tough to say because there, I, I don't know if any of the wide receivers that are in the market right now are really true number ones, right? Like, hold on, fan podcast, Zeke is not going to get cut. He'll get restructured. He won't get cut. Um, you know, other than Allen Robinson, who's going to stay in Chicago, you know, I, I'm not sure that anybody else is a really, is a true number one receiver. I, I Kenny Galladay is probably the closest, but Marvin Jones on the other side was not a slouch. So, right. you know, I'm not sure if he's a true number one or if he's, you know, like a, like a good, you know, tandem receiver, 
You know yeah. what I mean? Chris Godwin, I'm not sure, is the number one receiver either because Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, like, <laughs> he had everybody in Tampa. So I'm not sure if he's out there either. Corey Davis, we know, is not. We Like, I'm not sure any of these guys are going to get super-duper money. But, you never uh, look, you never know. I, I think um, – you know, just like the quarterback market, you know, a lot of these other position uh, positional markets are getting um, are getting inflated. So uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think it is possible for one uh, for uh, one or maybe even both of those guys to get big money. I think Allen Robinson's going to get extended. He's going to get a big contract. I think so. I, I, uh, Allen Robinson, and he deserves it. He is he is without question in my eyes, a number one receiver, Allen Robinson. He's unbelievable. He just is. So, you know, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know. Do you? Yeah. The, the I see, like I said, I think, I think a lot of guys are, you know, I think Chris Godwin can be a number one. He does have number one talent. Um, yeah. So, you know, he's more, he's more of a one, a to me or one B. Allen Robinson, you know, he's he's legit. Um, Galladay, I think uh, Galladay has definitely star quality, but he's so often injured. That's his problem. You know, you, you, you don't know you don't know what type of what type of contract is like is worthy for him. Right. right. Like if, if you're the Jets and you have all this cap space. Right. And you need a You need a number one wide receiver. And that guy fits the mold. Big physical and be able. He he runs routes well. He has decent hands, and you're looking at him like, okay, cool. Well, if he can be able to, you know, get over that injury bug, he can be a really really good receiver. However, yeah. what is the price? Is it fifteen? Is it sixteen? Is it somewhere that's hovering around twenty? You don't want to pay a Kenny Galladay twenty million dollars a year. Can't do that. Is Kenny Galladay as good as Mar as Amari Cooper? I think Amari has better footwork. Uh, I think Galladay is more physical. Um, they do di okay. they do different things. They do different things. Um, but I do think he has that type of talent. Yeah. But and even still, probably, and he'll probably get twenty. And that's and that's that's exactly, gonna be that's a, what Amari got. Amari Cooper got twenty million bucks. Yeah, and that's so, gonna be a problem for for whatever team that gets him because the Jets are gonna put twenty million dollars into this guy. I, I, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's wise for a team that's really trying to do. You know what right. though? I don't think. It, listen, if the market's that high, I don't think the Jets dip into it. I yeah. really don't because Joe Douglas, I don't think, is gonna make a dumb move. I don't think I, look, I, I really think the Jets are going to turn it around sooner yeah. rather than later. That's a good GM who's made a bunch of smart decisions. And think about it. Ever since he left Philadelphia, Philadelphia has gone down the tubes. Right. So, look, Joe Douglas, I think, could turn around the Jets quite a bit. Um, but, again, I, I, I think that the GMs will only go so far as far as paying money to – uh, positional players. Yeah. Right. Like I'm not sure Kenny Galladay gets 20. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure Chris Godwin gets 20. I just, I don't know it, because yeah, wide receivers are getting more and more valuable as the years go on. But at the same time, I mean, these are guys that, that like, like I said before, they're not true number ones. I mean, Devonte Adams is not hitting the market. Deandre Hopkins and right. Michael Thomas and guys like that. They're not hitting the, market. Don't hit the market for a reason. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. and those are the those are your twenty million dollar plus wide right. receivers because they legitimately change the game. Right. Like, if you bring in Kenny Galladay as your number one receiver, is he really going to change everything for you? Yeah, yeah. Really? I mean, he'll make your offense better, but he's not going to come. Like, he will not break a game open. Like, Scandrick, you just don't see him as that kind of player. Scandrick made a good point. Uh, I think he was on first. He was on undisputed. I can't remember what day it was. Um, he was saying that, you know, if you're if a wide receiver is hitting the market, th that means that a team has given up on him, which means that he's probably not a number one receiver, right? He's probably not a number one at whatever position he is. Most times, not all the time, right. but most times, that's definitely what it is. So it's like, how much are you willing to invest into a into a guy that failed where he was at? 
So, well, yeah, it, it, it's either that or they're just not willing to pay the number one right, receiver right, money, right. and they're going to wait to see how the market plays out. And and again, that's what I thought the Cowboys should have done with Dak Prescott. Yeah, right. Is, the market I'm not saying to, do, to not bring him back. What I'm saying is let him hit the market and di and let the NFL dictate right. what his price is. That because okay? I, I would have I would very highly doubt that there's a team out there that would have paid Dak Prescott forty million bucks. And nah, if there he was, he would have fine. He would have probably got a Kirk Cousins deal. Probably got something like Kirk Cousins. Right. So, look, I, I, this, that's the way I see it. For guys like Godwin and for guys like Galladay, you know, they're they're good players, but they're not I, – I, the Bucks. well, the Bucks tagged him, right? The Bucks tagged Godwin. Yes. The, yeah, he's tagged. Right. So they're, they're going to be working on a long-term deal and – I don't know if you heard the rumor. Well, Brady likes him, so Brady they, loves him. I, Brady loves him, and Brady also has his eyes on Odell. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I'm telling you, man. I brought this up on my show on Monday. If I'm Cleveland, straight up Odell for Chris Godwin. Yeah, straight up, I do because it. because I think it benefits both sides. I think Odell fits more with what Tom Brady can do as a quarterback. Right, he's the faster you know, more acrobatic player. He's a little smaller. He can go over the uh, over yeah. the middle of the field. Like, Odell would be Julian Edelman on steroids. Like, yes. he would be the best slot receiver that – In football. He, Odell Beckham would have a career year in Tampa if he played yeah. for, with Tom Brady. And, okay? and, 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 and Chris Godwin can serve as a tandem to Jarvis Landry – and a guy who doesn't really demand the football, which right. is somebody that Chris – uh, that Odell – was right, yeah. You know what I mean? Godwin, so, yeah, Godwin's Godwin's not a diva. He's not a diva. No, Godwin's um, not a diva. And and look, Jarvis Landry is a huge possession receiver. Chris Godwin could be your big play guy. Like I think it benefits Cleveland too. If I if if I were the the Browns in Tampa, Odell straight up for Chris Godwin. I think it benefits both sides. I yeah, really it's do. a good deal. Uh, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. That would be awesome. Also, yes. this is another one. The Bills released uh, John Brown and Quentin Jefferson. Well, uh, I saw that coming. I saw that coming. Yeah, John yeah. Brown, you know. He's so talented, but he's never healthy. Well, they got, they still got Stephon Diggs. They got Cole Beasley. Uh, they still have Gabriel Davis, who they really liked last year. So he was Austin Knox is a really solid NFL tight end. Yeah, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if the Bills dipped into another uh, dipped into getting another wide receiver, uh, just to replace John Brown, uh, probably through the draft, not right. really through free agency. But um, I wouldn't be surprised about that. John Brown is going to go somewhere and make somebody pretty happy if he's healthy. I, uh, listen, I, I think I think New England takes a flyer on him because you know Bill will like to get him on a prove it deal, a one year, you know, incentive based. You know, probably like $12 million, you know, probably seven of that guaranteed. I, I, I think Bill would take a flyer on him because the guy, the guy is fast. He is, he's good, you know. And he's he a big play threat. threat. He's a big play threat. Right, right. So, you know, so, I, I definitely, I definitely think he's going to, he's going to land somewhere good. But I'm looking at these cap hits, Mike. Kansas City, they are 20 mil under the cap right now. What the hell do they do? Twenty million under the cap. Over, excuse me. Oh, they're over the cap. I was going to say they're twenty million under the cap. Jesus Christ! Like yeah. they'd be able to make that roster even better. I don't know how they're how that's possible. Yeah. But over the cap right now, over the cap, twenty. You know, I. The Rams. The Rams are thirty-three. Well. The Chiefs would probably cut somebody like Mitchell Schwartz or, you know, maybe Laurent Duvernay-Tardif. They'll probably cut. Uh, I, 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 I sense offensive line. Maybe Sammy Watkins goes, you know, somebody like that. The Saints are 53. I know. And they already started cutting guys. Oh. Yeah, they that roster is going to look – Different next year. They are so over the cap. Quan Alexander already got cut. Emmanuel Sanders already got cut. I mean, they're going to lose so many players. So many players. Trey, Hend Trey Hendrickson is a free agent. They're not going to be able to bring him back. 
I mean, the, Janoris Jenkins is probably going to get cut. They tagged Marcus Williams, which is amazing to me. I didn't even think they would be able to afford him. But I don't know. I, I, I have no idea what the Saints are going to do. The Saints, do? The Saints have to cut. The Saints have to cut like eighty million in cap in right. cap space in order for them to be able to draft. Right. Like they they have to cut so many players. Like and the Saints roster is good, so don't be surprised if the NFL just raids the Saints. Right? They're gonna the NFL is gonna raid the Saints and they're gonna raid the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those teams are going to get absolutely raided. Bud Dupree, Juju Smith Schuster, Alejandro Villanueva, they are going to I mean, James Conner, the Steelers are gonna get raided, and whoever the Saints have to cut, I mean, it's gonna be open season on those guys. How how are they how are they expecting to to sign back Jameis Winston? They their their quarterback situation. Their quarterback situation is awful. Even if even if is Drew, Drew Brees, Brees gonna play. Well well, you know, the rumor it might benefit that them for Drew Brees to play another year. He was gonna restructure his deal, like he'd be able to restructure and, and, and clear up like twenty million dollars in cap. And but it but even if they clear up twenty million, there's still thirty plus million dollars. But it, wow. I I don't know what they're going to be able to do. They're, this, I, they're going to have to this cut is some offensive of. linemen. What we're looking at right now, Mike, look at the Saints, right? The Saints, take a look really quick. The Saints yeah. are what the Cowboys will be in a, in a couple years. This is exactly what they'll be. I'm looking at their – I'm telling you right I, now. I'm looking at their salary cap table right now not so so uh let me hang on i got all these ads popping up jeez christ ridiculous um so cap hit cap hit cap hit cap hit um so yeah michael thomas is an 18.8 million dollar cap hit Taysom hill is a sixteen million dollar cap hit. Sixteen, bro, and they, and they can only save five million dollars. They cut them before June first. Janoris Jenkins. I mean, they're gonna. Look, I mean, look at these guys that they're gonna have to get rid of. Like Teron Armstead is an All Pro left tackle. He might have to be gone. Ryan Ramchick is an All Pro right tackle. He might have to be gone. Janoris Jenkins, I say, is already gone. Uh. You know, guys like David Onyemata and Malcolm Brown, and, you know, they might have to cut Malcolm Jenkins. Like, I mean, these are good players. This is going to be a different team next year. Look how much this dead is a cap. different team, man. I Look mean, how much dead cap money they have. This is, this is nuts. How much dead cap money do they have? You know, it's, it's ridiculous when you see these, these dead cap numbers. Yeah, they have a lot of dead cap. A lot of dead cap. You know, look at Cam. Look at Cameron Jordan's dead cap. Alvin figure. Kamara has twenty nine and a half of dead cap. Jeez, look at Cameron Jordan. 30. Cameron Jordan twenty nine point six in dead cap. Jesus, that's that is insane. What are they going to do? I'm saying, like, what on, what on God's green earth are the Saints going to do? They, they, they're they stuck. Like, they, they have nothing. They're going to have to tear the whole thing down. They Listen, they, they went for the Super Bowl, and they did not get it. They, and they did didn't not get, get it. it. They didn't get it. And that's what the Cowboys are looking at, Mike. I'm telling you, they're going to be looking at the same situation in, like, two years if this TV money doesn't go in. Because everybody's talking about TV deal. The cap is going to go to 250, 350. What about now? What about next year? Yeah, this is a bad one. This, this is bad. Is, this, this is, this is, uh, oh, whew. the Saints, the Saints, the Saints may need to be in rebuild mode. 
the way it's looking right now. They may they may have to say to themselves, it's time to it's time they're to not very good at rebuilding. <laughs> no, no, no. History says it's not very good at rebuilding. So um yeah, it's 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 ugly. It's ugly. Yeah, that's a bad one. That's a it's bad ugly. one. But listen, you know, th- this is this is the this is the COVID situation. This is what happens when, you know, certain projections were made prior to this economic crisis that has happened that has engulfed sports, right? Yeah. You know, everybody was talking about, okay, the cap is continuing to rise. Okay, yeah, we can be able to sign on these players. And we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Now look. Now look where right. it is. Now you're going to have good teams, championship-level contending teams, have to now shed salary like like hair. Like they're going to have to snip it off, bro. And, and what, are, what are they going to be next year? What are they going to be next year? Right. Look at the Rams, $33 million in, 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 you know, over the cap. The Saints, like all of these teams, they're going to look different. They're going to look different. So, you know, I don't know, man. I, I what, what are your thoughts? I, I think that this, this Russell Wilson thing is getting, is getting ugly, Mike. Uh, you know, I think that it may be time for them to just give in. Apparently, the Bears' offer for Russell Wilson is insane. What was it? I I don't know specifically what it was. I just heard the report that the Bears are going to offer something ridiculous for Russell Wilson, like a king's ransom, like an offer they can't refuse. More than what Russell Wilson is going to be worth. Like, look, if I were the Bears, I would listen. If I were trading for Russell Wilson, three first round picks is as high as I would go, right? Like three first round picks, you know, throw a third and a fifth or something like that in there or something like that. And then probably a player, a quarterback like Nick Foles or something like that. Like that would be all I would give. I don't, I said this before, the Bears are going to look at this and say, listen, we whiffed on Trubisky. Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy are on the hot seat. And we got one year to make it up. We got one year to figure it out. And we're going to give up everything for Russell Wilson. I'm telling you, I, the Bears sounds like it would be likely. The Cowboys obviously are out. The Saints aren't going to be able to afford him. The only two teams that are left are the Bears and the Raiders. And the Raiders love Derek Carr. Raiders, the Bears Raiders are, not are the team that, uh, listen, the lane is wide open for the Bears. Number one, it's receiver. wide open. Number one receiver. They're they're a desperate franchise. They will give up three first round picks for them. They will. They They'll will. give up a ton. Yeah. I, and look, who is to say that it wouldn't be worth it? Right. The Bears' defense is already great. Listen, here's the thing. And they make this trade, Mike. Russell Wilson is automatically the best Bears quarterback in history. In history. The first day that he steps onto that field, he's the greatest Chicago Bear to ever don that that, that uniform in regards to quarterback. Yeah. So it's work. worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. You know, they've always been they've always been a defense first type of team. Matt Nagy with with Russell Wilson, do you understand even if they don't have the offensive pieces that they necessarily want right now, what he can be able to do with Russell Wilson is endless. He's an offensive genius. They have a number one receiver. They have a pretty decent running back in, in David Montgomery. They have yeah. some pieces. So, you know, you can't – if you're the Bears organization, you're gonna be, we've been bad for long, for, for, for a long time. Just do it. Just what does the it. Bears cap number look like? Uh, let's see. Before, before they're, we, paying, we, they're paying Khalil Mack a ton of money. Let's check. Nick Foles is getting paid a bunch. Let me tell. Let me tell you right. Allen Robinson is going to get paid a bunch. The Bears right now they're actually seventeen million dollars over the cap. They are they are committing over a hundred and eighteen million dollars to the defense alone. Wow. A hundred and eighteen million. Who are they paying? 
Let's look at it. Neil Mack, Akeem Hicks, probably. Robert let's Quinn. Look, let's look at it. Bear salary cap. Are they pay they are they paying Eddie Jackson yet and Kyle Fuller and all those guys? Let's see. That Bears nope. defense is good, man. Danny Trevathan, they might still be paying. So that, yeah, I mean, look, some of the older guys on that defense might get cut. Kyle Fuller, Kyle Fuller. They're paying Mac. Robert Quinn. Yep. Akeem Hicks. Eddie yep. Jackson. Yep. Charles Leno. Charles Leno's a left tackle. Yep. Let's see. Defensive tackle, Eddie Goldman. He's making $7.8 million. Wow, really? Okay. Roquan is still on his rookie deal, right? So he's yeah, making they're, what, And six? they're going to have to pay Roquan. Eventually, they're going to have to pay Roquan. Right. So, so that, that's, Roquan's so that's, a beast. Roquan is where, not somebody you can give up. That's where the chunk is. But the, the, the cap hits are, are insane. And dead, the dead cap money on Khalil Mack alone is $37 million. Lord. Ooh. That's what people are saying is that if they get Russell Wilson, they might have to give up Khalil Mack. Yeah. Yo, Khalil Mack is taking up fourteen percent of the cap. Fourteen percent. That's nuts. Is it, is it even smart for the Bears to do something like that? Yeah, you get Russell Wilson. You're definitely competitive now, but everything that you're going to give up, like if if you have to give up Khalil Mack and a, a bunch of your first round picks, is it even worth it? But, you, and but you, you, it's not like you get out of cap hell or anything like that. Like you. But, that that's the question that we were always talking about in regards to the like you know what we're saying about the cap. It wasn't designed to 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 move big contracts like this. You do this, it's going to hamper your team anyway. When you move 35, 37, 38 million dollars worth of contract, you're leaving a wreck behind you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, there's no that you're gonna you're wrecking the team that you that you're that that's trading for the player. And you're wrecking the team that traded the player. Right. So, you know, th this is the thing. It's like, okay, everybody everybody wants more player freedom and they want to go where they want to go. Okay. And so if, you, if you're if you that unhappy in, in Seattle and you're going to go to Chicago, well, there's, no, there's not going to be anything there. I hope that you're going to be happy with that. Yeah. Because yep. when they can't when they can't surround you with a competent offensive line because they don't have the money, yeah, right. You're gonna be in the same situation. It's the same thing with 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 Deshaun Watson. Like, okay, the Texans are bad. You don't trust them. Copy. Where are you going? Who's gonna be willing to take that thirty nine million dollars? And then when they do take that thirty nine million dollars, how many draft capital assets do they have to give up to get you? So, which means yeah. that they're not going to be able to help you get any better. Right. Which means that they're going to have buyer's remorse in a year and a half. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's just dumb. And the thing is, what's funny about it is that the players agree to this, this salary cap. They agree to these, these, these rules and, and all these restrictions. Yeah, it affects them too. It affects everybody. Yeah, I, I just don't. The NFL would be so much better. And I, I understand that there are going to be people that hate me when I say this. But, like, the NFL would be so much better if some of these guys didn't make so much damn money. It just would be. Bro, just, like, like just think about this. Just think good about teams this. could stay good. For a Tom while. Brady just won the Super Bowl, Mike. And I'm, I know we talk about this at nauseum. And the man is restructuring his contract to give them more money. If it, if, right. if Tom Brady could take five million dollars, he would. But because of the players' union and where he stands in regards to a top echelon quarterback, he will he can't do it because they wouldn't allow him to. That's the problem. Yeah, but he would take two million dollars a year. He would. Right. Because it would keep the team relevant for as long as he's playing. But everybody, they want their money, and they also want the organization to be able to, you know, move heaven and move heaven and hell and, and make sure everything no, – that's not the way it works. 
if you want to compete as a leader, as the leader of this team, you have to give us back some money. We're not going to pocket it because cap rules say that we have to spend a certain amount of the cap. We can't just say, okay, we have $250 million worth of, worth of cap space and we've only used 50 of it. No, you have to use a lot of the cap. So that money has to go into somewhere. You have to go put it into your other players. You're going to get free agents or you're going to draft heavy, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, stack up more draft picks and, and do it that way. But as the leader of your team, you cannot hamper your team. It doesn't make sense. If yeah. there's anybody that should be taking less, it should be the quarterback. Yeah. Yep. It's just yeah, simple. It's, it's just simple. I want my defensive players to eat. Give me $20 million a year. But no, you take 35, you take 40, then when your 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 star rookie uh, uh uh draft pick four years down the line he wants his money, he can't get his money because of you. Right. Not because of the team. Not because the team don't want to give him the money. No, no, no. You took his money. Right. But they always want to make it say, oh, the, 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 the organization doesn't want to pay him. I would love for every organization to go to every player that is under contract, right, or that is do a contract and give them the spreadsheet of the actual salary cap. We're going to sit down here. We're going to show you exactly all of the money that we've allocated to the players on this team. We're going to show you what the cap hit is. We're going to show you what the cap percentage is. We're going to show you what the dead cap is. All of these guys are getting paid. So if you want to be mad with anybody, don't be mad with us. We paid everybody. They took your money. Sorry. Yep. So don't get mad yep. with the organization because they paid it. How can you get mad with an organization? They're paying this particular person. They, they're paying everybody. Your contract goes, hey, well, you're just a casualty because we don't have any more money. Yep. But people don't understand that, right? More people need to go to spot track and go ahead and listen and look, look at these contracts. Maybe when they do that, Mike, I think more people will understand exactly what type of situations these organizations are in in regards to allocating all of this money. Yep. Then they're going to be like, you know what? You know, maybe this guy shouldn't be getting mad. Maybe, maybe if he got six million instead of nine or maybe if this guy got 35 instead of like look at this shit like look at the bears this shit is crazy for a team to spend 38 to 40 million more do uh, million uh million dollars more than their offense mike it's crazy that's nuts that's <laughs> nuts that's nuts I, look <laughs> There's got to be some sense of balance. A uh, hundred and eighteen million to eighty million. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna look at some other teams. The Cleveland Browns are have the opposite. They spent one hundred and thirty six million dollars worth of offense and fifty five million dollars worth of defense. Same thing with the Cowboys. Very top, very offensive heavy. Denver Broncos are pretty balanced, so they, that's why they have thirty two million dollars in cap. Detroit Lions, they spent $90 million on their defense. Jesus, where is that going? Green Bay, $100 million to $90 million. O'Neal said, question, which team you guys think, in play, uh, think playing Brady in the Super Bowl next year? That's a great question because that's it's exactly what it's going to be. Is he going uh, back? Honestly, in the AFC, man, look out for the Colts. I think Carson Wentz, if he's healthy – that's going to be a scary team, and they have cap space. That's the that's the sad part. They have cap that's space. A good to be team. Better. That's a good team with cap space. So the, I would say the, listen, Colts. The, the Colts have to be all over Trent Williams. Have to be, have to be. With Anthony Costanzo retiring, they got to be all over Trent Williams to fill the void. And uh, yep, that's it. 
Yeah, yeah. Draft defense, and there you go. Dolphins. Dolphins have spent $103 million on their defense, $70 million on their offense. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, and the, the Pats are going to have – do you think the Pats are going to be big-time players in the offseason? No. The, pa the Patriots? Yeah. No. No, they never are. But maybe they it's never hard are. for them to do. I think as long as Bill Belichick's around, they won't be. Okay. That's fair. I do think New England is going to improve next year, though, if they do something at quarterback. If they do something at quarterback that isn't Cam Newton, I think they'll be better next year. Yeah, I agree. Now, okay, let's let's switch topics here. We got to talk about it, Mike. Myers what, Leonard. Myers Leonard. What's there to talk about? How could he not know that word? What do you mean? Wait. So, well, I just want to make this clear. Did he say that he didn't know what it was? He had, he he had, one, he he had one of the most half-assed apologies I've ever heard, bro. He's I'm lying. Gonna... Of course he's lying. Right. Now, here's, here's something I want to point out. Yeah. Myers Leonard made a, a very bad mistake um, because – if you are going, and I'm not excusing it, okay? If you are going to use a racial or an ethnic slur, make sure it's not on a stream where thousands of people are watching you, okay? If you're in your room by yourself or something like that, and you want to call somebody that word, then at least there's nobody in the room to hear you so your career won't end, okay? Like, that's just... Common sense. Don't do it on a live stream. Okay, don't do it at all, but don't do it on a live stream. Here's the right. other part of it, though. I think that the, <laughs> the part of this that I think is, is you know, is funny, but I also think is a little screwed up, um, is that I think a lot of people in the country can relate. Um, not really as far as, um, you know, maybe not using slurs or anything like that, but there are times when video games make you a, an extra level of angry that you never thought that you could get to. Hold on, Mike. Do, do, do you want to elaborate a little bit? What do you mean? Paula has taken away your video games. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so, that's true. so you are a victim. <laughs> you, 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 you well, know no, exactly. actually, I got them back. I got them back. Okay, but sure, get them back. I, okay, I got cool. them back, yeah. My fiancé, my fiance, you know, took me out uh, finally... <laughs> You know, <laughs> she does. Yes. Listen, good, listen I've good. already said this. I've already checked him at the door. You don't have to keep teasing me about it. My point is, is that, <laughs> you know, I, look, Myers Leonard made a, 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 a really bad mistake. Now, I don't, that, I, it's really hard for me to say. I, I don't think he's anti Semitic. I think that, like, I think everybody, and I think even you could attest to this, right? I think that people have like a like a word that's like their peak anger word, right? Where like they just they 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 say it because they know it's bad and it's a way to release the anger. Okay, as a guy who's dealt with you know I, I'm a guy who has a pretty hot temper. I, I've dealt with issues like that my entire life, and that's what people have told me. They're just like, listen. You say things that you don't mean when you're angry. You say a lot of those things. And sometimes you have particular words that you spew out that, you know, are drastically inappropriate. But you do it because you feel a sense of release of the anger when you say it. Right. Because it's 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 an act that's bad enough that correlates to the anger. Yeah. It does, is what I'm saying making sense? Like, yeah, I, yeah, it's yeah. kind of complicated a little bit. I'm sorry. But um so I think that that's a possibility for this. Um, but regardless of the circumstances, I do think that Myers Leonard should, you know, undergo the, you know, whatever, you know, undergo the consequences of, of those actions. And, 
You know, like I said, I, I don't really know what there really is to talk about. He's going to get suspended. He might even get, you know, the, I, I, I'm not sure he'd get banned from the league, but I think he would he would serve a pretty serious suspension. He'd have to make amends with a lot of his teammates and, you know, a lot of his counterparts in the league and everything like that. He'd have to go through a, a real vigorous process. Um, but, yeah, I, I just – he made a really dumb mistake. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I just wanted to get your take on it because we have to cover it. You know, we we, we got we got to cover the big news. So, um, you know, I, I feel the same way. I think, you know, it's it's going to be unfortunate for him because, you know, he 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 stood with with a lot of the you know African American players with the with the BLM movement and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I believe that Myers yeah. Leonard is a good guy. I just believe I that you know, yeah. certainly, you, you know, he just. He just let that thing slip out, and but the the problem is that the the ignorance that he showed in regards to saying, "Oh, you didn't really know that word." Like, come on, just yeah, he he did, that's that's not just, true. Yeah, just fess up to it, just own it, be a man, you know, just 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 get in front of it and and, and be honest about it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I, because, I, look, I think if he were to just say, like, "Listen, I got really angry, I got overly angry, and I said something that I shouldn't have said." Yeah, you know, it, like I think that's way more understandable than him saying, "Oh, I didn't even know the word was." Yeah, like, like I, I would have way more respect for you if you just kind of fessed up and said, "Hey, listen, I screwed up, man. I'm exactly. sorry." You exactly. know, like, I don't, I don't have any anti because you're right. I don't think Myers Leonard has been one of the more vocal white players in the league, right? Like he's been pretty, you yeah. Know, he's, stood up for for BLM and regardless of whether you agree with him or not he he's somebody that you know stands up for people that f he feels can't speak for themselves and right. part of that again is you know the, the Jewish community is part of that so i i have a really hard time believing that he's actually an anti-semite i really don't think that he is but you know i i think that there are certain words that you say to people that you know are going to hurt. Yeah. Right? Like, like if somebody, if somebody calls you the N word, Barry, like they know whether or not they are like, you know, and, and maybe that, you know, maybe you're, you would see this as a different way than I would, but even if they don't have the true racist beliefs of like, I am above you, right? Like I'm superior to you. They know the N word is going to leave a mark on you. Right. Yeah. They, they know what's going to hurt you, so they say it. You know what I mean? It's a way of, of releasing that, that like, uh, like vicious anger that takes place. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's an anti-Semite. I think he just got overly angry and said a word that he shouldn't have said, and he tried to hurt somebody, and that's fine. Okay? But that's, you know, you got to – suffer the consequences when you do something like that, especially when you do it on a freaking live stream, idiot. Like, yeah. if you're going to say that, turn the mic off. Like, <laughs> something, okay? Yeah, listen, Just, man, the, it's unbelievable. The, 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 the funny part is because, you know, he was my dummy of the week last night. I mean, uh, you know, dummy, dummy of the week. I'm sure he was. Sure was. And I mean, listen, I, I poked fun at him. I didn't, you know, I didn't really go into him in regards to, like, going after his character. I just, I poked fun at this, like, okay, cool. You got mad because a 12-year-old was busting your ass. <laughs> you got, you got upset. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yep. you know, back back in my day, when you got your ass bust, you just passed the sticks and you moved to the back of the line. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, he gotta, he gotta learn how to channel his anger a little bit, man. But yeah, I, I don't think he's a bad person. I really don't. But, but he's gonna pay for this. Like, cancel culture oh, yeah. for him. You know, I, I said it. I said it on 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 the dummy of the week. I said the cancel culture Undertaker is coming for him. So you know whether 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 it's deserved or not, that's just the way it is, man. And you know, a lot of these things are self inflicting wounds. And you know, he's gonna look back at, at, at this time in his life and really really regret it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people who who support him, you know, he's gonna have to really have a nice sit down with them and and have a a, a really you know, extended, detailed conversation about, you know, certain things. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but yeah. it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Um, yeah. Let's see. 
Uh, we covered football. Let's 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 get your thoughts about second half basketball and uh, you know second half of the season and what do you actually think Blake Griffin's um, contributions will be for the Brooklyn Nets? Do you think that this is going to be a move that puts them over the top, or you know do you think that it's a eh move? Well, it's a move I think that makes their starting lineup absolutely insane. Well, right? he will start. He's not going to start. He's not going to start for them. No. Why? Because they feel that it's going to be better in regards to having him come off the bench. I mean, listen, they've been they they have their lineup. Mm-hmm. They know exactly how they they do things. You know, putting a guy of that caliber in the starting lineup, it's going to kind of reset your rhythm again. So I understand why they're doing it. Plus, I think Blake Griffin at this stage of his career, I don't think that he's a real – I don't think he's a starter anymore. I just don't. Um, so I think I how – Blake is probably – Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think <sighs> Blake is not the player that he used to be, obviously. But, you know, Blake was never – an amazing basketball player. Blake was Blake was just an amazing athlete. That's fair. Right? So That's fair. I, I think that you know his leaping ability and his strength and everything like that. And then there was a point in his career where he you know he learned how to shoot a little bit and he became pretty dangerous. But you know at this point, like I, I think Blake Griffin would have an impact um, just for. You know, the he's a guy that you have to guard. Right. Right. Outside of that, I don't really see much, but I don't understand why they would want to take him off the bench. I mean, it just – it fits perfectly. Kyrie, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan. That's well, easy. Like, it well, just makes more sense. And, and pull Joe Harris off the bench and roll and run it with that. I mean, why not? Well, like, like I said, I think I think it's more of they want to see exactly where he is um, health wise, uh, how he fits in the rotation, how he fits into the game plan. So I, I get it, I get it because I have a I have a different outlook on this whole Blake Griffin thing. I think you know when the signing happened, oh, Blake, Blake, everybody, that's. But I'm like, this is a nothing move. Blake Griffin, like A Fresh said in the comments. Hasn't dunked since 2018. His defense has never been impressive. And you're talking about a guy that was an athletic freak. So the athleticism is gone. The defense is going to get worse, right? Yeah. His, his rebounding has dropped precipitously over the last seven years. He's no longer he's no longer a great rebounder because he doesn't stay in the paint the bang like that anymore. So he can still get you about six or seven rebounds a night. He can hit the fifteen yeah. foot jump shot. He can stretch out and hit the three. He hasn't hit the three consistently this season. He's been bad. He was bad last season hitting the three. So we'll see what he has left. Like, you know, everybody likes to say, okay, well, maybe he wasn't motivated to play in Detroit. Being motivated and stinking up the joint are two different things. Like yeah, Blake you, is, you, is, you don't have to be motivated, but you're still going to be able to still play at a high level. Blake Griffin has not played at a high level in two years. Yeah, it, it, last year was was the first year, and again, he only played 18 games. But like last year was was the year where you kind of just felt like okay, it's kind of over for Blake, right? Because you know, the year before that, he was an all-star. Yeah. 24 and a half points a game. Like, he, he was solid. Uh, but this year, he's down to 12 points a game. He's down to five rebounds. You know, I, I think, like, Blake is kind of, I don't want to say he's nearing the end, but I think he's done with his stardom, right? Like, he's he's done as a, as a star player. Um, and in Brooklyn, he's not really going to have a chance to showcase that because, I mean, he's going to be there fifth or whatever scoring option like he's he's not going to have the ball nearly as much as you know people will think so i agree with you i I don't think that this is a a crazy you know a crazy move like if they had gotten andre drummond or something like that i'd say okay that's bad like that's that's death to the nba um but getting blake griffin is just you know it's 
it's whatever to me. Yeah, because you're right. It, there isn't a thing that Blake does anymore that's really, really good. You know, he's not an amazing athlete anymore. You know, I guess he's an okay interior scorer, but he really isn't anymore. I mean, the guy's shooting 36% from the field this yeah. year. Like, he's, just, he's not efficient at all. Um, so there isn't really much else that he does. He's a decent passer as a big man. You know, doesn't rebound all that well. It's just, you know, he's not the same player. So I expect him to be, you know, at the very – you know, at the very least, he'll just be a solid contributor. Like that's just all I see for him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think I think he's going to be able to give them some depth that they are desperately needing. But the thing with the Brooklyn Nets is that they still have a lack of uh, rim protectors. They still have a lack of rebounding. They still have a lack of of pick and roll, really good defenders. So you know, they still have the same issues. So they're still going to have to dip into the buyout market and get those things. So they're not done. This is a – it's a it's a lateral move. It doesn't make them any better. It doesn't make them any worse. They're just the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, right. you know, um, yeah, you know, that's it. I mean, the Nets, the Nets are, are an impressive team anyway. So we'll see what happens in regards to um, – in regards to how they look for the second half of the season. But Milwaukee's coming. They're starting to play better. They're starting <laughs> to play a little better. I'm just saying – Drew Holiday starting to pick it up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, and and uh, Utah starting to come down a little bit. Listen, there's still going to be a top team. I don't think Utah's going to finish with the number one record in the West. I think they finish with a top four, maybe five. So, um, yeah, I'm not a believer in the Utah Jazz. And everybody that knows me knows that. I talk bad about Rudy Gobert all the time. And it's, it's not the fact that I, I hate Rudy Gobert. I don't hate Rudy Gobert. I hate the contract that Rudy Gobert has. If Rudy Gobert was making 14 or $15 million a season, he'd be fine. But $30-plus right. plus million dollars for a guy that can't give you 20 and 15? No. Nah, no. Nah, not worth it. Yeah. There's two teams that I think are overrated in the league right now that are massively overrated, Utah and Philadelphia. I think those are the two teams that are massively overrated in the NBA right now. Um, and the two teams that I think are ridiculously underrated in the league right now are the Lakers and Phoenix. Those are the yep. teams that I think are legit. I think Phoenix is legit. I think I really I, I'm going to keep it real. I think my conference final right now in the Western Conference is Lakers and the Suns. I was just about to tell you that. I was just about to say that. I think Phoenix has a chance. It depends on where they finish. depends on the matchups because if they're – they don't have favorable matchups within the first or second round. It's going to be tough for them to get through. But, you know, it's all about matchups. I think the Lakers, if Anthony Davis can come back healthy, they can be fine. But, Mike, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, man. There's, there's hardly times that I'm wrong about injuries. And I've been telling – I was telling people about KD, and, I, and, and AD has the same issue that Kevin Durant had. It is. It's the same thing. He is a ticking – time bomb that thing is going to pop and if it doesn't pop soon it will pop late and they're going to have a really big problem on their hands because yeah. if that thing pops they're now going to be without him for a full year and what does that do to lebron james what does that do to the rest of the pieces they're going to have to actually modify that team on the fly and you know, there's a lot of uncertainty for the Lakers right now. They're, you know, they who would have thought that after winning the championship that they would be in peril? But they are very close, Mike. I'm not saying that they're there, but they're very close to being in peril. Yeah. Yeah, if AD's not healthy, the Lakers are in trouble. Yeah. If AD's not healthy, the Lakers are in trouble. Um, so – It'll be interesting to see how the uh, how the West shakes out. the The Brooklyn Nets are going to own the East. I, yeah. I, I, I look. I'm just. It's it's so easy to see now. Brooklyn. It doesn't matter who else is in the East. It doesn't matter who the conference finals is. Okay, I don't care if it's Milwaukee. I don't care if it's Philadelphia. I don't care if it's Boston. I don't care if it's any. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Brooklyn is going to roll the East. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Brooklyn lost, like, one game in the East. 
in the playoffs. I, mean, I think they'll lose more than that, but I, I can't disagree with you. I think it's I think it's Brooklyn's conference to have. That their challenge is going to be who who comes out of the West and can they beat whatever team comes out of the West? Because whatever team is in the West is better than any team in the Eastern Conference. So that's that's just that's just reality. You know what I mean? So Yeah, here's the thing, A Fresh, is that the Lakers wouldn't go anywhere. You're right. The Lakers wouldn't win the championship if uh, if Anthony Davis doesn't play. The Lakers wouldn't make the playoffs if LeBron didn't play. They need each other, just like how any other superstar needs another superstar. So I don't like you putting that narrative. And the funny thing about him is that he talks more about the Brooklyn Nets than he talks about his own team, and he's a Knicks fan. And I got I got sources that has said that he's always – been a closet Nets fan even when Jason Kidd was there and they were the fast break duo and you know they were doing great things over there he was definitely rooting for those Nets I I have it I have audio I have audio I don't want to play it I don't want to embarrass him but I have audio so if you keep talking crazy in here I will release that audio I will release that audio next live next live so just keep it up just keep it up but we all know that you are not really a Knicks fan. We know. We know. You're, you're, just call it you're a New York fan. You're a New York fan. You root for New York. If the Knicks are hot, cool. You're going to be the Knicks. If the Nets are rolling, which they're doing right now, the nah, Nets. Now, Brooklyn, huh? come on, man. We know you. We know guys like you. We call you fence riders. You're like, you're right there. You know, no matter what, wherever the fence leaves, that's where you're going. That's, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. So, you know, so before, before I get out of here, Mike, you know, I want to tease you a little bit in regards to your, your, uh, your, your Yankees. Zach Britton, what do you, what do you think about that? See, that's just a low blow. That's a low blow. See, I, when I criticize the Mets, I criticize them about players that they didn't have. Now you're criticizing me about players that I do have. That's not fair. That's a low I blow. You, I just asked you a question. I said, you know, what are your, what are your thoughts about That's that? That's a low group? blow. That's a low blow. It's, so it really is. I, I expected more from you, more class. <laughs> That's what I expected. I expected more class out of you. That was really – that was <laughs> bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The guy – you're telling me to have more class, right? Yes. And every time I bring up my Mets, I don't throw no shots at nobody. I just say, listen, I am really excited. I'm super hyped, and here you come with your nonsense, and you throw shade. That's what you do. So I just asked you a question about Zach Britton. That's all I did. I, I didn't. I didn't say nothing. So I must have struck a nerve. I must. Yeah, have not having Zach Britton's gonna suck. But you're right. Not having Zach Britton's gonna suck. How do you replace that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Listen, the Yankees have a lot of young pitching that. You know, they actually have a surplus of young pitching that they've brought up to the major leagues, and they've had success. They just don't have enough roster spots to put them. Yeah. So I'm assuming that a lot of those guys are going to end up in the pen, and I'm assuming that's how they're going to do it. Yeah. I, listen, they, they definitely – I think – listen, I, I think you guys will be fine. I've seen the Yankees have a – like, I, I've never seen a list of injuries that you guys have over the last, like, two or three years, and you've – Still, still found a way. Yankees always know how to find a way. So, you know, somebody will, will say this. Somebody will step up. If I, mean, I, I am saying if, if or when La, uh, Luis Severino comes back for the Yankees, that rotation is going to be absolutely absurd. You're you talking about so? Cole, Kluber, Jamison Tyon, uh. Severino, Jordan Montgomery, uh, Davey Garcia. Woo! Woo! Man, oh man, that rotation is going to be sick. Sick. We go see. And we're gonna hit and we're gonna hit a thousand home runs this year. We go we gonna see. We gonna see. We gonna see. Listen, I'm and, keeping track. Oh, this have you watched Gary Sanchez in the spring in spring training? It's spring training. It don't matter. It, it don't does. matter. 
Yeah, Gary Joe. Sanchez is raking in spring training. You, you know what? Absolutely you know, raking. You know, you know what's gonna you know what's gonna be crazy is that you're so happy right now, and then when the season starts and Gary Sanchez is below the Mendoza line, you're going no. to be livid. Boy, yeah. I cannot wait for Francisco Lindor to hit two fifty. Oh, two fifty and he'll lost thirty five home runs and hundred fifteen RBIs. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking yeah. I'll take eighteen. It. 18 homers, about 70 RBIs. It'll be a solid season. You, you want to put money on that? Huh? You want to put money on that? You want to put money on that? Oh, man. Who'd you give up for Lindor? Ahmed Rosario. We, get, uh, we, gave, we gave up nothing. That's what Who'd we you gave give up? up? What was that trade? What did that trade look like? We gave, up, we, we, we gave up Rosario. We gave up a gym bag and a pack of... <laughs> A pack of missiles. Lindor trade. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, 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 hey. Hang on. Hang on. Lindor got trade. Okay. So it was Francisco Lindor uh -huh. and Carlos Carrasco uh -huh. for Andres Jimenez. He was good for you guys. Andres okay. Jimenez was good. Andres Jimenez, Ahmed Rosario, Josh Wolf, and Isaiah Green. Man, I like that Josh Wolf, man. And, 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 a, and a gym bag. Yeah, yeah. Back. Isaiah Green, man, he was a stud. That's Mike Trout right there. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you right now, we gonna lock up Lindor, eight years, two hundred million. Call it right no, now. Oh my God, he's gonna get ten years, three. Are you kidding no. me? Eight years. Lindor is gonna get three hundred million. You're out of your mind. Eight years. <laughs> this is my deal, okay? Just don't don't try to rain him off rate. Eight years, two hundred million. All right, we'll lock yeah. him up. Then Syndergaard comes back. We're gonna have one of the best rotations in all of all of baseball. We're not gonna have better. It's not gonna be better than the Dodgers. I understand that, but we'll have one of the best. And we will we'll be we'll be up there. You know, we'll we, we'll probably win the division. What is it? You know, Degrom. You'll have Degrom, Syndergaard, Carrasco, Taiwan Walker, Taiwan Walker. Uh, who else? Well, we have uh, Jordan Yamamoto. Fighting for that spot, we have uh, da uh, David Peterson. There's a lot of guys. One more. I thought you had one more guy. No, Matt's got traded. Strowman. Uh, Strowman. Strowman. There yeah. you go. Strowman's in there too. So, Fan okay. podcast, yeah. you, you need to get off my live with that nonsense, okay? Four years. Yeah, that's 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 going to be Lindor's contract. <laughs> I'll, listen, I'll take that for Lindor. I'll take it. It'd be it'd be it'd be well spent in a in a in a league that doesn't have any uh, salary cap. So we're good with that. We're all right with that. All right, Mike. So, uh, you know, we got a big day tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. We do. We do two yeah. interviews tomorrow. RJ Ochoa blocking the boys. That's oh, that's going to gonna be fun, man. That's going to be fun. It's gonna we be got RJ Ochoa tomorrow. Who's the other one we got? We have uh, we got Ilya Hassan. Ilya Hassan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So big day. You know, double up, big doubling day. up on interviews tomorrow. Doubling up on the interviews. You know, we're going to be talking a lot of Cowboys with uh, RJ Cho. That's going to be fun. Uh, I know gonna be Matt, a lot of fun. Matt's going to be miserable, but um, you know who cares? So yeah, <laughs> who cares? Who cares about Matt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, all right, man. So I'll uh, see you soon. All right, I'll see you, buddy. Later.